everybody. It's my first time here, so um, je m'excuse pour l'anglais. Uh, un de ces jours, je serai assez confortable pour, pour présenter en français, mais uh, aujourd'hui, c'est en anglais. We'll talk about what is OAuth, um, O-A-T-H, 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 uh, it's been pronounced many times. We'll talk about what is H-O-T-P, or how is it different from T-O-T-P. We'll talk about uh, what T-O-T-P CGI's raison d'être. Why, uh, why not just use PAMOTH or PAM Google Authenticator or many other things? Why not use Duo, UbiServe, LinOTP, etc.? And we'll talk about the main goals. Um, so who am I? I've been a programmer since 1995, which is not that very long time. I used to work for McGill. I was head of the, uh, the web group at the McGill University. I was a Python programmer since 2002 uh, and Linux administrator since 1998. I worked at Duke University of Physics and I co-wrote YUM. Um, well, co-wrote, I helped out with the creation of YUM. Um, I'm part of the Linux Foundation IT team. I've been working on Linux Foundation since 2011 in November. Um, main reason why they hired me is because I used to work for IT security at McGill University, and uh, after sad events of September 2011, uh, they were looking for somebody with a bit more uh, security expertise to join the Linux Foundation team. And um, I'm interested in web and Linux security, and uh, I'm also interested in social engineering. For example, you know, if, you know, if you have a Russian name and you speak with a heavy Russian accent that they present on security topics, people think you are actually much better than you are. <laughs> so <clears throat> I, uh, I, I don't use it very often, because actually uh, most of my adult life has been in the, in the US and Canada. So what is OATH? Um, O-A-T-H, not to be confused with O-A-U-T-H. Um, which is uh, something completely entirely separate. Stand o OATH stands for Open Standard for Authentication, with an N. OAUTH stands for Open, uh, open Standard for Authorization. Um, I'd like those two people to meet and to beat each other senseless, because it's very confusing for everybody, not just for you and me. So we'll talk about the OATH without the, uh, without the U, about the authentication. So Oath is a bunch of people who got it, gathered together. It's like more than 30 companies from Microsoft, Google, and everybody else. They, um, they put together a standard for um, one-time passwords. Um, so one-time password, the benefit of one-time password is, um, it, how many of you have here used uh, two-step verification with Google? Uh, should be many, much, many more hands, by the way. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the, it, it's basically the mechanism behind it. Um, uh, the parent standard is HOTP, it's counter-based. So it's, it takes a shared secret between your phone and the, and the Google server, and it, it uses HMAC procedure to calculate uh, a string, and then it takes a subset of that string and turns it into a six-digit code. And that's, that's, that's basically how, it, how um, when you send that code, the server does the same calculation, same HMAC procedure, takes subset, turn it into a six-digit code. If those codes are the same, that's how it knows that you have the device with the same pre-shared secret. Um, TOTP is a subset of it. Uh, it it's instead of taking a counter, so with HOTP, every time you authenticate, the server increments the counter by one, and your client increments the counter by one. If you press the button too many times, you basically lock yourself out. So um, because the, the, there's a window of good numbers, usually about 20 to 30, if you press that button more than 30 times and you didn't manage to authenticate during that period, the server will just stop validating you because the window, you went far beyond the window. So the, it's bad for Google, who doesn't want to be on the phone with clients saying, can you please re re uh, resync my counter with, with your servers? So the subset of HOTP is TOTP, which is time-based. So it basically takes the, count, the uh, current timestamp time from 1970. Everybody knows that's the, uh, that's the good time. And uh, it, it uses that instead of the counter, so it increments every 30 seconds. If you've ever used the Google Authenticator, you'll notice that it's after 30 seconds it changes. Um, the digits that are on the, on the output on your screen are impossible to, well, impossible, take that with a grain of salt. It should not be possible to use any number of them in any succession to figure out what the, what the actual pre-shared secret is between your server and, um, and your device. There's a wide support in hardware and software. There's Google Two-Step uses TOTP. Facebook uses T Facebook Verify, also has six digits, um, uses T TOTP. Microsoft even uses TOTP. Um, there is HOTP is used in a number of devices, YubiKeys, if you've ever seen them, they're cute little devices that are like this. They plug it into your, um, into your laptop, and there's one big button on it that you press, and it actually acts like a keyboard and sends a um, set of keystrokes, which is really clever, I think. Um, it, it's, it's supported there. 
So why did we write TO to PCGI? It's basically, it actually is pronounced 2PCGI uh, after 2P and Vino. Uh, don't ask. Uh, TO to PCGI is um, back to the years ago when we wrote it. There was no fully free OAuth implementation. There actually still isn't really. Um, it's either non-free or non-libre or frequently both. It cannot be securely used ac across multiple systems. I'll talk about it in a bit later. There is Duo Security, which is the um, uh, many people have actually used. It's cloud-based. You put all your eggs in the cloud basket there. It's non-free. There's a 10, 10 users is free. Then you start paying prices. It doesn't scale very much, obviously, if you have over 100 users. Um, there are a number of standalone PAM modules that may, that some of you may have investigated. There's a PAM Google Authenticator, uh, which was um, the game in town two years ago when we started writing it. And PAM Google Authenticator is, is, is neat, but it cannot be used securely in more than one system. So the TP in the OTP part and the TOTP stands for one time password. So if you, if you can take the same digit and reuse it on a different server, that breaks the standard. So if you have PAM Google Authenticator installed in server one and server two, and they have shared the same secret in both of them, an attacker can listen for, the, for you to authenticate to server one, then reuse the same code in server two, because they don't communicate with each other. They don't ha actually have any idea um, that server two doesn't know that this isn't already used once on server one. There is a number of ways you can sort of game the system. You could put your secrets on an NFS partition, and, but don't do that because it then travels over the network in clear text, which is even worse. <laughs> um, they, they don't have any provisioning. It's, you can provision a Google Authenticator from command line, but it's basically it. So our core goals were to write a server that will solve the problem, that will be free forever, that's open source, it's Linux Foundation, um, that, that is open, that uh, is pure Python, excluding some of the crypt crypto libs that um, are non-essential uh, features of it. It's simple. A lot of people get hung up on the CGI part and said, well, what is it, 1990? Um, but, well, the CGI is um, very fast. It is very simple, very well understood. Uh, the core of the entire library, the, the code that you call when you authenticate, when, when you submit that six-digit code, fits in 900 lines of code, including comments. So it's extremely simple. There is a very, very small surface of attack. Uh, surface of attack is an important aspect of the security uh, library. Somebody actually asked me, why didn't you just write it in Django? And I just kind of laughed. So, <laughs> uh, uh, the... There are, we, we gave it a lot of thought about the security. It runs as unprivileged user. Uh, that's another benefit of CGI. It can actually transition into its own SC Linux context. Um, it relies on mutual server client TLS authentication. We can, we can uh, complain about TLS and OpenSL and all those things all day long, but we still don't have anything better, so, um, unfortunately. So they, um, the, when the client communicates with the server, both the client and the server mutually authenticate. So an attacker will need to first even steal your um, uh, certificates and the key before they can actually even get to the application. So the features of, TO, of 2 pcgi are we have full TOTP support. We have a provisioning CGI, which I will showcase in a moment. We have QR-based enrollment, all the good things. We have HOTP support for UB keys. We have free radius support because it's been requested so many times we just wrote it. Free radius um, that's pretty much the, still the only game in town. It was written in the early 90s. It uses pre-shared secret that is uh, um, one for all clients and for the server. So if one client is compromised, you basically have to redo your entire thing. So free radius is really horrible, but everybody still uses it. So we, we kind of had to write the, uh, the way, way to hook uh, to PC giant into free radius. Um, there's LDAP integration, so you can do, you know, how we, have you ever used the um, secure IDs? And you know, so you type, type your password, then you type in the six-digit code, and you can do the same thing with, um, with uh, 2PCGI. It will check your password with LDAP or, or any other thing, and then it will check your code, then code separately. It, it, there is a fast CGI mode. So you, if CGI is fast, you can write it in fast, you can write it in fast CGI. It's even faster. It's, uh, it scales really well. It can run behind a load balancer with a few caveats. You have to use a DB a database storage backend for this. Uh, the default backend is file. Um, you cannot use file backend sanely between two uh, members of the cluster. 
Um, we are working on a potentially MongoDB backend. Uh, there are a couple of testing we need to do to make sure we can do it securely. There are a number of things we do to make sure that um, the one time really always stays one time. So we have to rely on locking quite a bit. There is no locking in MongoDB per se. Why because we really want to scale it up. If you have thousands of clients authenticating at the same time, you want to make sure that any one cluster can fail at any time, but without it impacting anything. And you can already do it with a database storage backend. The state files that um, are written per user are actually JSON. So um, uh, a JSON store that, that is master master replication actually is an excellent idea. So uh, we just want to make sure that we can rely on, we can work around the lack of locking in MongoDB almost actually any JSON distributed server lacks locking for good reasons, but bad reasons for me. Um, we'll see. It's not there yet. We'll work on it. So um, any questions on this before I get to the lab? <laughs> 